Hi there, my name's Ben and I'm a consultant in the Technical Research Department of Esri UK. And welcome to this session on customising and extending ArcGIS Experience Builder. So I just want to start with mentioning there are two versions of Experience Builder. We have the out of the box version and that's where users can build apps without writing any code. And then we have the developer edition, which is essentially the same, but you can customize it by creating your own widgets and themes, which I'll come on to later. This session will focus on the developer edition. We do have another video in this box set series called Unifying ArcGIS Apps Using Experience Builder. And if you're not a developer or you are brand new to Experience Builder, I'd recommend that you watch that video. So I'm just going to give you a quick introduction to Experience Builder, and then we're going to touch on creating custom themes and dive into creating a custom widget. And then finally, I've got some links to some extra resources to really help you get going and kickstart your learning of the developer edition of Experience Builder. So at Esri, we define an experience as a web application made up of digital items. So these web applications could be map centric or not, and that's up to you. And to help you create these, we made Experience Builder with the following design goals in mind. Firstly, it's data driven, and that means data sources power how your apps are designed and not the other way around. It's also flexible in terms of layout, so you have full control on the look and feel of your apps. So for example, they could be map centric or, or non map centric scrolling page. And then it's also flexible in the way that you can create apps with 2D or 3D content within the same app, or you could actually have both. So what's great about Experience Builder is that you can have multiple different maps or scenes or data sources all within one application. It's also configurable, so end users can create apps within a WYSIWYG builder interface. And it's adaptive to mobile, so Experience Builder makes your apps work well with different screen sizes. You can have different representations of the same app dependent on screen size. And finally, as this is a developer presentation, Experience Builder has an extensible framework, so we can customize and extend it to meet our own specific workflows. So end users create apps by adding in widgets and themes via a WYSIWYG builder interface. WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. So you can see the end output of your app as you are making it. In Experience Builder, we, we have this concept of widgets and themes, which you might be familiar with if you've used one, if you've used one of our other products, Web App Builder. And essentially, widgets are a focused piece of functionality contained in a portable package which you can use in multiple apps. Themes, on the other hand, control things like the look and feel of your app. So that includes like colors and layout and fonts and that kind of thing. Themes can also be used to render different layouts of your application based on screen size. So for example, you may want to hide certain elements on a mobile device to save on real estate. And likewise, these can be used in multiple apps, so your apps can have a consistent look and feel across your organization. We provide several widgets and themes to you, but you may need to add specific designs or workflows, which is where the developer edition comes in. So there's a few prerequisites before you get started. And the first of these is Jimmy. And this is a JavaScript library built by us at Esri that's used in Experience Builder. Jimu provides the interfaces and types to work with widgets, properties, message actions, and data sources. It also contains several classes which will be used throughout your experiences. Next, we have React, and this is a JavaScript framework for building user interfaces. It splits the UI into manageable, independent, and reusable pieces. And when you're creating a widget, you're just creating a React component. And finally, we have TypeScript. And this is a superset of JavaScript, which is used throughout Experience Builder. And if you're familiar with JavaScript, it'll be easy to pick up and learn. So the remainder of this session is largely going to be focusing on creating custom widgets. But I just quickly want to introduce you to themes. 
So we have a few things to think about here. And the first of these is what's called theme variables. And these are the key parameters that define the core aspects of a UI design and includes things like fonts and padding and borders and colors, etc. And what's powerful about these is that you could create your theme and your end user who is creating the app can alter these theme variables. So for example, they could change the primary and secondary colors. They could select different borders for components all within the application in the settings panel in the builder's UI. So essentially this saves your organization time as the end user can customize the look and feel of an application without having to know any CSS and any outputs of this can be shared across your organization. Then we have style components, and these are functions that generate CSS files for UI components on the fly. So at runtime, the style components are loaded and dynamically applied to the theme variables to style them. Style components can also be used to style DOM elements such as widgets. Okay, so just a couple slides on widgets, then we're going to jump into some code. So here is the file structure of an experience builder widget. The folder on the left will be the name of your widget. And note that the name of your widget folder needs to be the same as in your manifest.json file, which is essentially the metadata of your widget. Otherwise, it won't work. And in your distribution folder, you have your compiled code, and this is taken care of for you by Webpack. And then the runtime folder contains the business logic of your widget. So you have translations in there, so your widget can display in different languages. And the main thing in here is the widget.tsx file, which is the main entry point to your widget and contains all of your business logic. Then we have the settings folder, and this is where you can provide an interface for your end users configuring the widget in the builder interface. So for example, for the map widget, there's a settings panel that appears on the right telling you to select a web map or web scene from your organization. Okay, so I'm just going to exit out of here and let's load up Visual Studio Code. And now I'm just going to run you through how to create quite a basic widget. And what it's going to do is it's going to use a map widget as its data source and it's going to dynamically display the extent of that map beneath. So as the user pans the map, the extent is going to be updated in our extent widget below. So I've downloaded Experience Builder Developer Edition to my machine here, and I don't have time to go into that in this session, but there's some really good documentation on developers.arcgis.com. It's very easy to get going and started with. And I'm in the client folder of Experience Builder, and where you're going to be spending most of your time is in this Your Extensions folder. So if I just expand that, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to open the widget.tsx file from the runtime folder of my show extent widget. Okay, and what I'm going to be doing here is I'm just going to uncomment code and walk you through what I'm doing as we go through it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import our necessary modules. So we're going to import React from Jim Ucore. And we're also going to import base widget and use all widget props from Jim Ucore. If we were using modules from the ArcGIS API for JavaScript, we would load them in here. Experience Builder doesn't load the JavaScript API by defeat default, and this is for performance reasons. And next, we're going to create our interface of state. And this is going to hold our dynamic extent, and this is going to change as the user pans the map. So this is just showing you how to initialize and set the state. And here we're going to be creating our default class of widget, which is going to extend base widget. And we're going to use the type, we're going to all widget props here to get access to the widget properties. So we have a watch handle on the extend watch to look for changes. And we're going to set the initial extent state to null. And then here we have this is configured method. And this is going to check and see if the user has selected a data source, or in this case, a web map. So remember, all of your widgets are data driven. And next, we're going to activate a React lifecycle method. 
And these are out of the box, so you don't have to do anything to, to wire these up when you're working in a class component. And this does an unmount on our widget, and it is called when our widget component is removed from the DOM. Then we have a class property on active view change for the widget, which is assigned to the function gymumapview. And this function uses the gymumapview.view.watch method, which takes two input parameters the extent property, and then a callback function to execute each time the extent property changes. And this set state method is called to re-render the widget with the updated state. And last but not least, we have our render method. And this is gonna first check to see if the user has configured the widget. If they haven't selected a data source, it's gonna return select a map. And if it is configured, we're gonna inject some HTML into our widget and we're gonna be using the dynamic extent from this.state. So if I just save this, I'm now gonna jump into the landing page of Experience Builder Developer Edition, and we're going to create a new experience. So you can see here, these are the default themes that are available to me. These first four are for your traditional map-centric applications, and then these next three for scrolling page apps. And we're just going to start with a blank full screen app for this though. Okay, so I'm first going to add in my map widget. And let's just style this a bit. I want to give it a width of 100%. And then I'm also going to add in the show extent widget that we've just been making. Let's just position this a bit nicer. There we go. And also give it a width of 100%. So... At this stage, I haven't configured this widget yet, and I need to give it the data source of this map here, which is why it's returning select a map. And I can do that by using the settings panel of this widget. So if I just go to that here, you see I'm getting this error because we haven't actually configured it as a settings panel and set up a settings panel yet. So if I just jump back to VS Code here, and I'm gonna open my setting.tsx file, and similarly to before, I'm just going to uncomment code and walk you through what it is that I'm doing. So you're going to see a lot of similarities here as in the widget.tsx file. This, the settings panel is almost like a mini widget in itself. So we're importing the necessary modules, notably Jimu map view selector. And this is going to allow our users to select a map as the data source for this widget. Next, we're creating our default class setting, which is going to extend base widget setting. We have our supported type as web map, and you can actually have multiple types in here if your widget supports multiple different data sources. You can just add them into this array. And then we have this on map selected. So on map selected, we're going to grab the map, and then this on setting change is going to listen to any changes in the web map selection and we're going to use the current selected state as our web map and then finally again we have our render method and this is using a style component in this class name attribute we also have our jimu map view selector component which uses the map widget ids property to use the web map and on select we're going to use the selected web map so if I just save this here now and go back to Experience Builder and reload. So when I go on to configure this widget, you can see I'm no longer getting this error and I can select the map that I've added to my experience. Let's just save it and go to Live View. And as I drag the map, you can see the dynamic extent is being updated below. So quite a simple widget. I just really hope that this gives you some foundations for developing your own custom widgets. Okay, so let's just jump back to the slides. Okay. So this has largely just been a brief crash course to get you started. And if you've liked what you've seen here, there's two more videos I'd really encourage you to watch that go into a deeper dive on how you can create custom widgets and themes. There's also a GitHub page that I'd like you to look at, 
and this includes some sample widgets including how to load Esri's JavaScript API widgets into Experience Builder, such as the coordinate conversion widget. Also, we have our ArcGIS developers website, which provides documentation on the technologies Experience Builder uses, such as Jimmy. And finally, I'd, I'd just like to encourage you to learn about React and TypeScript. So React is one of the most popular front end frameworks available at the moment, and there's a ton of resources available online. So I really like you've in, I really hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today and I'm excited to see what you start making with Experience Builder. Thank you.